It's the NFL on EA Sports. All eyes are on Mike Evans. He was terrific in last week's game, putting together a 131-yard showing. It's the Bucks and the Ravens on Thursday night primetime. Now we're about five miles northwest of downtown Tampa at beautiful Raymond James Stadium near Florida's Gulf Coast. Tonight we begin week eight with a good matchup for you here between the Baltimore Ravens and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Brandon Gordon alongside Charles Davis and CD. You think about matchups in the NFL, you're usually thinking this offense versus this defense. But this game here, we get two different offensive philosophies that are matching up in this one. Yeah, we certainly do because on one side, you've got a team that not only loves to throw the football, they do it quite well. They're the number one passing offense in the league. And on the other sideline, the ground game is their strength. They're a top five unit in the league. So contrasting styles of moving the football. To me, this is going to make for a very interesting ball game. First drive of the game, and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers will have it on offense. Brady now on first down. And the coverage terrific there as that's knocked down and incomplete. Well, he certainly thought he had a window to push that ball downfield, but as soon as he released the throw, the corner was there to slam that window shut. Here's Bernard. Yeah, this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent game. They'll need five on this play to move the sticks. From the gun on third down, Brady. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked up by Marcus Williams. And the Ravens are going to take possession of the football. So the ball changing hands on the interception. But meanwhile here, we do have an injury on the play. While they come out and take a look at him, we will step aside for just a moment. Still nothing, nothing here in quarter one, but an early test to check in on as we've got a third down situation looming. Jackson. Open man is Bateman. It's complete. And he will have a Ravens first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Doesn't matter whether it's a zone coverage or man coverage, the drag route can be effective when it's run well. Keep it here on first and ten. And stopped a few yards shy of the goal line at the three. 17 more yards on that one as they keep the drive rolling. And this, I mean, it's certainly something to watch out for. He is not afraid to call his own number on plays like that. And here he takes it for good yardage. And we know this defense prepared all week for this, but sometimes when you see it in person, it's a whole different ball game. And all that preparation, it goes right out the window. Here we go now on first and goal. Here's Jackson. And that'll be taken in by Andrews for a Ravens touchdown. A great effort there. His third touchdown now on the year. And the Ravens are on the board first here on the road in Tampa. A pretty big early test for the defense coming up. What can they dial up here to try and thwart this third down situation? They'll try and run for it with Fournette. And he gets it to the 34. Good enough for the first. Give him the third down conversion. Five yards on the play. The Buccaneers at four and three, a game over 500. Well, they were losers their last time out. Try to get back in the win column, but obviously not an easy task here in a hostile environment. Yeah, always tough to win away from home. 
but sometimes what you do is you use these types of games as bonding experiences and carry that into the contest. This offense, they've got a really nice drive going, and now it's first and goal. Can they finish it off and punch it in the end zone? Now Brady. Incomplete, but a penalty flag is down in the backfield. Let's get the call. That hold coming from the left side of the line. Hands got caught in the cookie jar on that one, and the flag came out. Penalty against him. A terrible spot for a holding call as he'll try again, but now from further back on first and goal. Now here's a look for the end zone, but that one's going to wind up incomplete. An incomplete pass on first down. Here's second and goal. Now Brady. Looking end zone, but it's incomplete. One thing that you're going to see from this offense is that they love the matchup with their wide receivers against this secondary. That one wasn't successful, but don't expect them to back away from attacking all game long. Godwin's got it. Touchdown, Tampa Bay. A 16-yard touchdown. And the Bucs are an extra point away from drawing level. Good bounce back drive right there through the pick on drive number one. Drive number two leads them right down the field into the end zone. Agree totally. Excellent bounce back. Tremendous poise. So here's the situation upcoming. Second quarter, third down, and this defense just try to force the field goal attempt. On third down, Fournette. And he will have the first before he's brought down right on the chalk of the 20. Five yards is the pick up there as that extends this drive. Nice job there finding room to maneuver, and he worked his way into another first down. And look, they had great field position to start. But boy, they've done a nice job taking advantage of it. Now they're just hoping to cap it off. Not quite a first and goal, but still a red zone alert nonetheless as we jump back into the action. First and 10, just outside of the 10-yard line. They go back to the ground now with Fournette. And he's into the end zone for a Tampa Bay touchdown. Leonard Fournette, his eighth rushing touchdown of the year. And the Buccaneers have moved out in front. A strong, determined run there, Charles, to get in for six points. This is why it's such a team game, isn't it? And I know it sounds really generic. And it's... Coming up here, this defense looking for a third down stop in the second quarter. On third down, Jackson. And he's got his tight end. That's Andrews. And he will have a Ravens first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Partner, you know when we call a game, we talk about Lamar Jackson and his speed and his elusiveness and the ability to get him on the ground and how tough that is for a defense. But how about his development as a thrower, as a professional? Time for this defense to try and stiffen as they'll try here to defend a first and 10 situation at their own 17-yard line. Time for this defense to try and stiffen as he'll try here to defend a first and 10 situation at their own 17-yard line. Jackson on first down. That's into the hands of the tight end, Boyle. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right at a yard. Ball at the eight here for second and a yard, maybe a touch less. Got his tight end. That's complete. That's Andrews. And the Ravens are going to have a first and goal coming up as the tackle made at the three-yard line. Jackson. And in for the Ravens touchdown. Mark Andrews with his second touchdown of the game, fourth of the year. And the Ravens are an extra point away now from tying this ball game. And Charles, they continue to have trouble stopping him as he's into the end zone yet again. Yeah, that's multiple series now that have ended with him in the end zone. 
as in best. The Bucks offense set to begin their next possession. And with still more than a minute to go in the half, time to try to mount a drive. And I would think that they would have to. This is today's NFL. You got to push it whenever you get an opportunity. You can never have enough points with the high-powered offenses that you face. And analytics will tell you, try and score when given the opportunity. To Evans on the slam. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. First down now, but that clock rolling. And he's going to have the hook up to Gage. Now the Bucks going to use the first of their timeouts as they stop it with 28 seconds to go in the first half of play. Good strong throw and catch right there. And so far in this game, the alleys have been open for them to get completions, and they're taking advantage of it. Brady now on first down. Throw right side, take it in by Godwin. Now another timeout called for by the offense. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. So a decent gain there, but not their fourth consecutive first down like they had on the first three plays. You sound almost disappointed there. You want to fire the offensive coordinator on that one or what? <laughs> they would gotten into a rhythm. I thought they were just going to keep going. Now, almost a win for the defense, but if that's your win, you're not doing very well right now. The throw on second down by Brady is incomplete. I know coaches tell us all the time that having a powerful arm isn't the number one thing they look for in a quarterback. But when you're trying to throw inside routes and you need to put some heat on it, it helps have the big gun. In this case, just a little bit too much. And Fournette trying to power his way forward, but I don't think he got there. The Bucs forced to use their third and final timeout as they'll stop the clock with 12 seconds to go in this first half. Suckup's kick is good, and they take a 17-14 lead. So they're able to get that drive with three points in this one possession ball game. And I a big play coming up for this defensive unit. They're down, but just by a bit on the scoreboard. Can they get this third down stop in the third quarter? Throwing his Brady on third down. And looking for Godwin, but it's intercepted. Picked off by Patrick Queen. And the Ravens are going to have it here at their own 15. So it was a drive that had real promise here to begin the third quarter, but ultimately derailed by the INT. And that was the position you wanted to be in, coming out to start this third quarter, get a nice drive going, looking for the end zone. Possibly got a little bit too greedy right there. The Ravens offense getting ready now for their first possession of the second half. Their defense did its job. So a big third down coming up here for the defense, trying to preserve a very slim lead in the third quarter. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. And Jackson cannot get away, and he'll go down. Shaquille Barrett in there to drop him for his 11th sack of the year. We've seen him escape similar situations earlier in the game and get away for pretty good yardage, and that time they get him down. Yeah, they've had enough evidence that he can get away and run for good yardage, haven't they? That time it felt like, okay, enough of this. Let's play it the right way and get him on the ground before he does any damage. The task for the defense here is simple. Get a stop. They've got a one-score, seven-point lead. And now Jackson will look to throw it. That's going to be complete on the sideline, but, you know, that throw left him no room to run, and the good footwork nearly all for naught. Looking to throw again on second down. Jackson, and he can't find anywhere to go with it. And he goes down. Vita Vea coming right up the gut. Gets in there for a loss of nine. My man, it's been a rough night for that offensive line, and it's only getting rougher. Five sacks now that they've given up in this contest so far. It feels like the witching hour out here, doesn't it? Okay, stupid question. What's the witching, witching hour? Yeah, the witching hour. That's when everything goes haywire late at night. Oh, 
possibly a turning point. Big play coming. This is third and long. Now Jackson. Under pressure, they got him again. Shaquille Barrett make that now four sacks for him in tonight's ball game. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes, and we've got a one-score game. So it's Raven football here as we welcome you back. And they've got a fourth down now in a game that, to be honest, has been pretty much everything we could have asked for. Here we go. It's Jackson on fourth down. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. They had to go for it with such little time remaining, and the Bucs are going to take over with excellent field position to boot. So the defense has to stay out and get one more stop. They were able to do it, forcing the in. of eight leaves him with two to go on second down now the Ravens going to use one of their timeouts as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play they'll run it again with four and and he'll only get a yard to bring up third and one now a second timeout called for by the defense as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Inside handoff down to Fournette. And he gets this down to the 18. Good enough for a first down. Now the defense will burn their third and final timeout. And they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. And they've got it inside the 10 at the 8. They picked up five yards last time. Now they double it and get 10 here. Well, that's a carry they have to be satisfied with. And throughout this game, they've been satisfied with what he's given them. Whenever they've needed a big run, a first down, he's the guy they've turned to. And it doesn't matter what the defense thinks. They feel like they've got the confidence to keep handing it to him and keep picking up good yardage. Oh, this one incomplete. The pressure got to him as he released it. And it's second down. Nothing on first down, so the ball remains at the eight-yard line, second and goal. Up the gun, Fournette. And he's able to get it down to the two-yard line. 77 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. A lot of tired bodies on that field, but this is a big play, third and goal. And this is caught, and that could seal it. It's a touchdown. On those slants, everything happens so quickly, what makes it work? The timing between the passer and the receiver. In this case, a slant route. Ordinarily, it's probably about three steps before you go on the slant. In this amount of time, I think it's a two-step deal. Boom, put his foot in the ground and got inside for the pass. Got inside for the pass, got inside for the catch and the score. Extra point try now for Suckham. And the lead is up to 14. So that winds up a seven-play drive all told. And it's Mike Evans who caps it with a touchdown reception. Now it's Ryan Suckup on after the touchdown to kick it away. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. Jackson and the Ravens, here they come. Down by two touchdowns, a little over 50 seconds remaining. And they're in danger of a third straight loss as they come up on first and 10. Now Jackson finding Washington. And they're able to get this one across the 35. 
Here's Jackson. That's into the hands of Crochet. And he's got a first down as he's tackled inbounds at midfield. Jackson. That's taken in by Duvernay. And some space here. And he's out of bounds. Almost gets to the 10. A big play that time on the catch and run. 39 yards. One last shot for Jackson. And he's going to be dropped. Back at the 15-yard line. So fire the cannons. It's a victory here for Tampa Bay. And it was their defense that led the way, allowing just three points that lone field goal in the entire second half. And remember the old adage, offense sells tickets. Defense does what? Wins championships. And in this game, maybe a championship wasn't won, but a game was by the defense, right? Help them just a field goal? That's a heck of a job. I mean, when they went out there with that determination and a pretty good game plan, pretty good idea of what they wanted to accomplish, just love the execution, love the tenacity, love the way they finished. So for the Bucs, they improved to 5-3 and three as they approach the halfway point of this 17-game schedule. And now they'll have a few extra days before they face the Rams next week. Meanwhile, for Baltimore, they drop back to 500 now at four up and four down. And they'll try to turn things around next week as they have a matchup in New Orleans against the Saints.